Hey there, it's Chris. Wanted to give you a quick status update on how the app is going. Uh, a lot of the UI is still not there. We've mostly been trying to get the pieces, the functionality in there first. Integrating Facebook login was pretty tough to be honest, even though they have an SDK to make it easy. Their documentation is not very good. So it's really those tiny uh, edge cases and um, you know, these, these different scenarios that are hard to troubleshoot. So for example, uh, we have to request certain permissions from the user in order to be able to access their Instagram account through their Facebook uh, login. And with a couple of the user, uh, sorry, with a couple of the Facebook accounts that we were logging in with, namely um, some test accounts that we had, it wasn't really asking for the right permissions. It wasn't asking for permissions at all. So we would be able to log into the app and authenticate the user, but we wouldn't be able to do anything with their Instagram account because we didn't uh, get their token. Uh, however, we, we banged our heads against this wall for a while until trying a couple of different Facebook um, accounts, namely our own personal ones. And that's when it started asking me for the proper permissions. So the the this web view that is shown was completely different and there was no indication of why this was the case in the documentation and we couldn't figure out what the difference was between the Facebook accounts we were using first versus the, the these ones that we're using now. And so it's still a little bit of a mystery, but I think that when you're working with, you know, other people's platforms, some of the things like that are beyond your control. So all we can hope for now is that uh, when we roll this out to more people for beta testing, um, that the results come back favorably. Maybe what we saw was just due to the fact that we were using test accounts. Okay, so I wanna show you where we're at. So now we can log in through Facebook and the API we're using does require people to have an Instagram business account and it has to be connected to their Facebook page and all that stuff. So I do have that set up and that's why I'm able to select this Instagram business account that I want to use. So this, this only shows up because we haven't submitted our app for um, Facebook review because Facebook has to review that you're using their uh, API properly before they'll approve it. So that's just saying that it's not approved yet. Okay. So then you click okay. And then you come to this screen. Um, I'm going to show you the user journey in just a second. This right now is just the state of the current app. So you can go to the edit screen and you can add new usernames and you can remove usernames from here. And then you hit here, you can hit the username and it's going to pull down the stats. Now, um, we focused on just laying out the data uh, in a rough sort of way based on the wireframes that we did. Um, we're still going to wait on the designs before cleaning all of this up. So the data is all here. It's just, you can see it's it's not pretty and it's all over the place. <laughs> We've also implemented a third party library called SD web image. That's going, that makes it really easy to fetch images via a URL. So I highly recommend that. Okay. So this is, this is where we're at. Like this works for any profile I put in. So for example, if I put in, um, Maybe Ariana Grande was one of the examples we used quite frequently. So, you know, and we're obviously going to have to correct that. So um, the user doesn't see a flash of the um, prior username before loading the new one. So anyways, that's the where the current app is at. Uh, I want to show you what the proposed user journey is and what we're trying to design for. So the main navigation at the bottom is going to be a tab, sort of a tab view essentially. And we're going to have four tabs. So we're going to have a profile, which is what you've seen down here. We're going to have a list, which is the list of users. We're going to have a setting screen and we're going to have a premium section, which is, you know, what you can pay for to get more functionality out of that. So uh, we were thinking that the initial logon sorry, the initial app launch would look like this, where we'd have a dummy account with data and we would basically tell people to uh, give them a, 
a rough welcome and tell them to start playing around with the metrics to, to learn about it. Because one of the ways we could have done it is to um, take them on a guided tour and highlight different uh, pieces of this profile analytics and tell them what it's all about. But since we're planning to allow people to tap on all of these blocks to show a tooltip and to tell them what the metric is and how they can use it, I want people to uh, learn by exploring. So they're going to hit OK to dismiss this pop up. It's going to show them this dummy account. They can tap on these different things and see what it's all about. Let's play around with the profile. And then when they click on list, it's going to look like this with the dummy profile here, but they won't be able to tap that because the first thing they have to do is log in and connect their Instagram account. We need their access token in order to be able to make those requests um, to get the data from um, the Facebook servers. So you're going to need an Instagram business account. Like there will be some education here as to what they need. So you're going to click login. And this is the Facebook, you know, web view that you just saw earlier in this video. They're going to hit submit. And then after that, we're going to pop up a little um, paywall, a soft paywall to tell just to tell people like what they have access to now. And we the app does have more functionality, more to offer, and they can sign up for a free trial now. Um, and it would tell them what they would get. So this is all sort of up in the air uh, for discussion, but we did have plans to monetize the app. Um, and I think it would make it a much more interesting experiment, um, but we're not going to try to hide the close button and sort of trick people into, into signing up. I don't think that's, at least that's not the way I wanna do business, right? So they'll hit not right now. If they don't want to sign up or take the free trial and then that's going to dismiss that window and they're going to come to something like this where they can add new usernames and they can swipe to delete usernames and when they tap on one of these usernames it's going to um, transition to the profile tab and it's going to show them the profile which they um, which they selected so that's that um, the settings screen has a bunch of different proposed settings and these are all sort of up in the air as well. This would link to the app store. This would link to a way for them to submit feedback, privacy policy, Facebook logout, delete account, change log, restore purchases, pretty standard stuff. And then the last tab premium here would just show the options for, you know, unlocking the extra functionality. And if they are already signed up as a premium member, then this tab will not show up at all. So then it'd just be three tabs. I think that's all I have to say. Like some functionality such as this copy all hashtags, uh, this would exist here, but when they tap on it, it would say like, hey, this is a premium feature considered signing up for our free trial or joining uh, for a couple of dollars a month to unlock this feature. Um, that's, that's pretty much it for the user flow. So anyways, this is what I came up with in an afternoon, which I proposed to our designer. So we started a discussion on it. And as I told you, one of the reasons I really like Figma is because of this functionality where you can collaborate. So you can see that he had, you know, different comments to say on, on the flow and, you know, I respond and we were able to respond here. And so it's a dialogue. It's really good for working remotely. Um, yeah, so we're just sort of hashing out this user flow and then he's going to start um, wrapping some design on it. So he's already started thinking about uh, colors and how things will look and stuff like that. And he, he, this is all stuff that he hasn't really shown me yet. So <laughs> you're sort of getting a preview of what he's working on. I don't know how finalized these are, to be honest, but anyways, that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm really excited to see this. Uh, come together and we're still targeting end of April but I, I realize how fast that's coming up because although it looks like we have a lot of the functionality down I think that last 20% that last 15% is going to take the longest and from what I've been reading getting your um, Facebook app approved you know by the Facebook review team can take up to two weeks and the Apple review process is really quick now. Getting it into the App Store is just a few days. They've really improved on that. But getting 
you know, getting approved to use this Facebook button and use their API could take up to two weeks. And then also factoring in that we need to create a website for this. You know, it could be a one pager, but that's still something that we need to do. Um, you have to come up with all of the text for the web page, the privacy policy, you know, all of this thing, all these little details. And uh, end of April, I think it's doable. Um, although it's not a big buffer. I think we, we, if anything, we'll just make it, but it'll be interesting nonetheless. Definitely learning a lot. Thank you so much for following along. I'll see you in the next video.